Hello everybody, and welcome back to the beautiful world of Prometheus. Today, we got some serious work to do. You see, I came up here on top of my base because I think this is going to be the last time we start off an episode in this base here. It is time that we finally upgrade into something a little bit more permanent, a little bit more serious. Yeah, I kind of have a plan in mind of how I want to make use of the space on this island, but we are going to be taking the episode today to really grind out a ton of resources so we can get all of the concrete building pieces that we need, all of the glass pieces that we need, at least for the time being, uh, to finally get rid of this old stone building and build something a little bit more interesting to look at and to live in. You know, I'm, we're going to be spending a lot of time here on Prometheus. We're going to be doing all the missions. We're going to be gathering countless resources. So I want to be living out of a base that we can really enjoy coming home to every time we finish up a mission or finish up a, a run for resources. So I think the main focus for today is we're just going to start doing everything we can to grind out as much silica, iron, basically everything that we need to seriously upgrade into a base. And of course we'll be making use of the second character that I created to actually craft up those pieces. Uh, so we'll be making better use of our resources once we start spending them. Uh, but to kick things off, what I think we should do... is let's try and get a second organic residue cleaner up and running because we're going to be making use of this miasmic pickaxe that uh, we really haven't been using too much. Uh, some people in the comments are saying, you know, why are you mining titanium without your miasmic pickaxe? And you definitely have a point. You know, I definitely need to make more use of this thing. So today we're going to be getting an absolute load of silica out of the Arctic tundra with this miasmic tool. We did that test with the oxide. I'm pretty much fine to just fill my entire inventory with uh, that poison damage, noxious crust, and we should be totally fine just to make it back on our MOA. Our MOA's fast. So I think we'll kick things off today with just a run out into the tundra, get a ton of silica, a ton of noxious crust silica, and then let's look into setting up another organic residue cleaner that we can really start cranking out that. Uh, the other thing that was also recently updated and kind of perfect timing for us is if we're going to be making a ton of concrete, we're also going to need an absolute ton of stone. And the most recent patch that came out, a quality of life patch, actually added noxious crust to stone itself. So our ability to mine stone has just gone through the roof. We're going to be able to get tons and tons and tons of it in a short amount of time. Let's go ahead and pick off this Jaguar over here. Um, but with that new update, stone, as well as every other resource, is really not going to be anywhere near as much of a problem as it once was uh, when we were using just our normal pick to gather that. So, super happy about that new update. We're going to be using this Miasmic tool a lot today. So, with that being said, take one last look at this base because this is probably going to be the last intro where we have it looking like this. Let's get to work. Alright, so we have everything that we need to craft ourselves the organic residue cleaner. Uh, the other interesting thing about the latest update is they actually consolidated all of the crafting benches. So you no longer technically need a normal crafting bench, a machining bench, as well as a fabricator. All of the recipes from the lower tier benches are now contained within the new bench. So everything from the machining bench, bench and from the original crafting bench are now in the fabricator here. Uh, one of the downsides to that is that, you know, now you have to actually scroll through a million different recipes, so you're going to actually have to make more use of the search bar up here. So you can just type in what you want to find, click it like that, and then get to crafting. All right, and just like that, we got ourselves a second organic residue cleaner. Uh, we really you know, don't have very much space in the base at this point, so I'm really feeling the need for this new operation, this new upgrade. So for now, let's just get this stuck right here. Uh, we're gonna uh, stick it right here, wire it up, uh, and 
go out on our first mission. So we're going to be getting a ton of stone going in maybe this one here, a ton of silica going in this one, and then while that's running, we're going to go and try and grab a ton of noxious iron as well uh, to really get ourselves prepared for making a ton of steel. Um, for the concrete, we also have to actually go into tier 3 and research the concrete building pieces. We haven't actually done that. So I'm going to grab that. We're going to get the whole shebang here, all the pieces. Um, and while we're in here, um, I do think that maybe eventually we're going to want something like the steel barred trim set, but uh, for now, let's just stick with the concrete. We're, we're also probably going to want some aluminum pieces. Uh, we're definitely actually going to want the clay brick as well here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab clay brick. I have a plan in mind for using some clay brick, mainly as roofing. Um, for our barn. So we're going to be also building a new barn for our animals. Uh, with the new Leica update coming very soon, we're going to need a much expanded barn. Uh, we're going to have chickens coming into the game, maybe things like sheep as well. So there's going to be a ton of new animals that we're going to need to house in addition to our normal mounts here. Um, we have a jaguar coming in. We're going to make that new barn. Get that taken care of and also get a really nice awesome new base up and running so that's the plan for now i'm gonna go ahead and get prepared for that journey and let's head out into the arctic and start grabbing some silica and as we're looking to totally fill our inventories with tons of ores i'm also going to go ahead and swap out our stomach attachment on our armor for another pockets so we're going to sacrifice one of our food slots just for a little bit and let's get ourselves even more inventory space going here. Uh, so as I mentioned before, you know, you're totally free to add and remove attachments whenever you see fit. The only thing it takes is a little bit of time, but you can swap out your attachments whenever you want, add them to whatever pieces of armor you want. So it's a really awesome system. All right, and just like that, we got ourselves another pockets attachment. Absolutely beautiful, filled out our inventory here. Our weight capacity is up to 165, so we are ready to start some serious farming. And one last bit of preparation actually before we head out, I'm going to go ahead and grab ourselves the thermos, craft up one of these, and with the thermos we're able to make ourselves some tea. And with this tea, as you can see, it will give us plus 10 to our temperature, so we'll be even warmer out in the arctic zone, as well as 25% health regen. So that'll help offset some of the damage that we're getting um, as we're taking poison damage from the noxious crust. And if you stick the tea in your beverage slot here, it'll consistently consume that, so you'll pretty much have that health regen up permanently as long as you have the thermos in your drink slot. So I'm going to go ahead and plant up a little bit of tea as well as just farm a little bit out in the wilderness um, just so we can have some going right now. Uh, but that being said, let's get ourselves some tea and we can start this farming journey. Alright, we got our thermos. Now we just need to fill that up with some fresh water here. Perfect, and now we can craft ourselves some tea. Awesome. And with that taken care of, all of our preparations are complete. It's just about to be nighttime, so I think we will call it a day here. And after that, you know, enough procrastination. Let's get to the farming. See you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. We are heading out into the Arctic biome. We're going to be getting all of the stone and all of the silica that we can possibly carry. Um, the other thing that was also recently updated is salt also drops a noxious crust now. Uh, we don't really need any salt for the time being, but that's just another thing to note. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go out, find a ton of silica, and get to work. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop a health potion, and let's head back to the base with what we have. We're almost full. So we have a ton of silica, a little bit of stone as well. Um, and we are at about almost 900 on the poison damage. So I think now is as good a time as any to take our load back and get it 
processing in one of those residue cleaners. Might as well grab a little bit more stone on the way. Alright, we made it back no problem. As you can see, we're at 975% on the debuff. And we did use a couple health potions, but we're just fine. Um, so I'm going to stick all of the silica in here, and then get all of the stone going in this one. Awesome. And then let's take what we found and just stick it in our cement mixer for the time being. Uh, the other thing that we're also going to want now is an electric masonry bench. So let's look at our tech tree here, tier 4. We're going to go ahead and grab the electric masonry bench as well as the electric carpentry bench. Uh, for the time being, let's just focus on crafting one of these things up. Uh, but as you can see, it's 60 steel. I don't think we have that much steel right now. Uh, we almost have 60. But we're going to need a bunch of iron on top of everything else that we gathered. So I think we give this miasmic tool another test, see if we can't get ourselves a bunch of noxious iron as well. Uh, and that'll get us really set up for all of the concrete buildings we're about to start crafting. And even with our two residue cleaners running and our chemistry bench producing more health potions for us, we still have surplus power. So those two solar panels are really doing us well. Uh, and we, even if we were running a little over on our power consumption, we also have this battery here. So I think we're good to ignore expanding our power output just for a little while. That's more than enough for what we need for these two things. Um, and let's see if we can't get ourselves an electric masonry bench as well. So we're going to need a hundred concrete for that masonry bench. I'm going to get that mixing up in our good old-fashioned cement mixer here. And once we have that, uh, we should be more than ready to get ourselves the electric masonry bench. But for the time being, I'm going to hop back on our MOA. Let's go check out a couple of those uh, early tier caves. Maybe we go hit up the... Um, lava cavern as well and just get ourselves a ton of iron and make our way back with that haul and we have all that clay going for us in the arctic biome in our drill as well so we're gonna upgrade this staircase to clay as soon as we can do not want to have to keep repairing it every time we're out here the other thing i should look into getting is the um, repair hammer attachment as well. That'll make our lives a little bit easier as far as repair time goes too. Alright, so we are back in our lava cavern here. Let's go ahead and snag up all of the iron that we can find. There we go, level 50. Loving those experience buffs. So we're going to grab up some coal while we're here. We're going to need that to make a ton of steel with. Alright. Just like that, we have a really nice amount of iron in our inventory. I'm going to grab just maybe a couple more, and then let's head back to the base and get this starting to process. Stick a little bit of this noxious crust on our mount to lessen the damage just a tiny bit, and let's get on our way. Alright, we made it back to the base. Let's go ahead and get this noxious crust offloaded and get to work on processing it. And all of that regular iron that we picked up, I'm going to get all of this processing into steel blooms here. That's going to be over 100. 125 steel blooms with all of that, and we haven't even started smelting down our noxious crust either. It looks like all that stone that we had in there is already finished processing and our inventory is totally full here with uh, silica almost at least. So that is just the insane power of the materials processor here. We just have so much silica. We're going to go out, maybe do another stone run. We'll have a full couple rows of stone in here as well. Uh, and we will be ready to start getting our concrete going. Uh, the other thing is, oh yes, we have our 100 concrete finished here, so let's get ourselves an electric masonry bench going as well. Alright, and just like that, we have everything we need for our electronic masonry bench. Let's craft this thing up. 
Awesome, and with that craft, we are level 51. We are just cranking through the levels. Gotta love the power of the Fruit Muffin. Uh, the Fruit Muffin's power is really that experience bonus. Oh, one of our water wheels is down too. Um, so you're going to want to use the Fruit Muffin pretty much all the way up until level 60. After that, you can think about replacing it with something with a little bit better stats on it, but that experience gain is just insane for leveling. So 100% recommended all the way up until level 60, and then once you're max level, you can look into uh, some other types of food. I'm also just going to get a ton of regular iron starting to smelt up. We're going to need a ton of iron and a ton of glass to start making glass building pieces too. So let's get that starting to smelt up. Uh, I also want to use some of these to look into getting ourselves some iron storage cabinets too. Uh, so we're going to need a ton of regular iron on top of all that steel that we just crafted. Looks like our tea has finished growing as well here. Let's go ahead and snag that up. You don't need a ton of it. The tea, we've been using it that entire time and it's barely ticked it down at all. So these tea leaves will last us a long time. And we're starting to get so many crops at this point that I don't really have storage for. I'm gonna go ahead and research the wood composter. This will start turning our leftover crops into spoiled plants and then into fertilizer once that's done. So let's go ahead and craft one of these up too. I'm just going to stick it out here next to all of our crops for the time being and get all these leftover plants in here. Uh, and as you can see, it increases the rate of plant spoiling significantly. You can see it ticking down really fast. Um, and for every 10 spoiled plants this creates, it'll give us one basic fertilizer. Alright, and we're going to stick our electric masonry bench down right here for the time being. We still have enough space for a walkway here. Um, but yeah, with this thing up, I'm going to get it wired up and we're going to be able to start cranking out all of the concrete buildables that we need. Uh, but for the time being, you know, the sun is down, our battery is starting to drain. Uh, not quite yet, but it will be. Uh, so I think it's time to say goodnight for today. In the morning, let's check out how much of this stuff has crafted up in our cleansers. Uh, looks like this one is totally full. Uh, so we're going to have to look into getting ourselves some new storages. Uh, look into what we can do as far as getting ourselves our buildables set up. So we have a lot to do in the morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick sleep and see you guys when the sun is up. Good morning, everybody. It is a bright and beautiful day here on Prometheus, and we are ready to start cranking out some concrete. So let's head back to our brand new electric bench and see how much concrete we can get out. Alright, so it is currently storming. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of time inside the base and see how much of this we can get crafted up. So I'm going to go ahead and queue up as much as we can here. Uh, 105 and we are short on uh, maybe stone. I didn't quite catch what we were short on here. Um, Let's see. Uh, it looks like it's stone, yes. So we're going to need to go out and go on a quick little stone run with our beautiful miasmic pickaxe. So we're going to go ahead and stock up on as much of that brand new noxious crust from stone as we can and get that started in the process as well. Alright, we are out of that storm, back into the peace and tranquility of the tundra. We got a few giant rocks right at the gate here, so let's get to mining. Alright, we are pretty much full here. I'm going to go ahead and quickly dump this back at the base, and let's see how much stone we got out of that. Alright, so we almost filled the entire inventory of this cleanser with just the noxious crust, so we're going to have to look into getting ourselves some more storage for all these resources we've been gathering. I think it's finally time we grab some of this iron, hop over to our crafting character and get some iron storages up and running for this base. So every single one of the iron cupboards takes 40 iron bars, it's a ton of iron, uh, but thanks to all that crust that we got we're going to be rolling in it. So I'm going to go ahead and craft up maybe three of these on the other character and that should be more than enough for what we need for the time being. Alright, so we have three beautiful expanded iron cupboards crafted up. These will have 
10 extra inventory slots each thanks to our crafting character. I'm just going to stick these down right next to our materials processors for the time being. And we'll get all the noxious crusts into these. Um, and the materials as we process them as well. So I'm going to take all of this stone out of here. Put it in this chest for now and then maybe a half of this noxious crust. Stick it in here as well. See how gigantic the storage is on these with that extra inventory space? Absolutely awesome. We're going to do the same for our silica over here. Get as much of that as we can stored. We have just loads and loads and loads of silica right now. So I think we're looking pretty darn good in terms of resources. Stick this epoxy in here as well while we're at it. And with all the level ups we've been having, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our skill points as well here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the final point in Tis But a Scratch. That's going to finish off our solo points. And then for our talents here, we're going to focus again on our offense here. So I'm going to take two points in how many shots here. So there's a 10% chance every time we shoot our gun, uh, it will not actually spend a bullet. That's going to be awesome. And then I'm also going to top off Gunsmith here. So our gun will uh, lose durability 20% slower when we're shooting it. So that's going to be absolutely awesome. And we do have another storm rolling in here. I think I'm going to take this time to just do a few things around the base as we get prepared for all of the concrete we're about to start crafting. And I just placed our other iron storage right above the forges here for the time being. We're going to be grabbing stuff, putting it in and out of our storages for quite some time here. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean out these inventories a little bit. Get all of this up here. Oh, and just like that, we are level 52. Doing some quick harvests out here in the middle of the storm. We have tons of tea now, so I think we're probably safe to swap those out to something else for the time being. And with that level up, we got another solo point. I'm going to put it into bounce back, get us a little bit more health regeneration going. And then with our two regular talent points, I'm going to grab one more point in critical damage and then max out our accuracy with firearms as well. Now, I'm also planning on using a bunch of interior wood for our build, so we're going to need a lot of wood as well. So I'm going to go out and chop down a ton of trees and get this inventory filled up with wood. Oh. The tree just slapped me in the face. Alright, we are pretty much full up on wood. I did move a little bit farther away from the base this time. I don't want to completely deforest uh, the entire place right next to my base. It is looking a little barren out here at this point. Um, the developers are working on a feature where trees will eventually start to respawn. So hopefully we can get a little bit more greenery out in this big brown open area. Um, and for the time being, I'm just going to go out a little bit further into the forest when I need to gather wood from now on. Alright, so I'm going to get another stack of 500 refined wood going here. Uh, it's going to take quite some time, as you can see, 16 minutes. So I think it's time we maybe start looking into getting ourselves an electric carpentry bench as well. I don't know if I mentioned it, but that little ice box that we got from the previous mission, I went ahead and just placed it right here. Uh, with our deep freeze consistently producing ice, we can keep this thing topped off. Um, its spoil rate protection isn't that great compared to something like a refrigerator. Uh, but it is, you know, more than enough for just sticking some extra fruits and vegetables in there and having it as a backup for when we need it. Alright, and so I came back into one of the early ice zone caves just to see if there was anything remaining. We pretty much cleared this whole place out, uh, but it does seem like our exotics node respawned. So I'm going to go ahead and use our miasmic pick to get our exotics this time, and that should give us uh, some miasmic crust from the exotics as well. Alright, so we have 16 noxious exotics from that, and each one of those should be five more exotics. So we're gonna get a lot more yield out of our exotics nodes, thanks to the miasmic pick. And the main reason I actually came out here again was to check on the progress of our clay. So it actually hasn't gotten us too much clay yet. I'm going to go ahead and grab all this up. We're going to keep letting that mine for us. 
Um, but we're going to want to be making a bunch of clay brick building pieces for what we're about to try and construct. The way those snowstorms stop is always so ridiculously sudden. And so I'm going to stick our exotics in here. And let's see how much we get. Yeah, so every single one of those is five exotics. So that's going to be quite a few for us. Uh, thank you guys for letting me know in the comments about that tip. I actually did not think to use the miasmic pick to get exotics either. So we're definitely going to be doing that from now on. Um, as well as making sure anytime we get titanium, we'll be using the exotic pick. A lot of people have been reminding me to do that. So we will definitely be doing that moving forward. We're also going to get our clay smelting up into clay bricks. You get five bricks per single clay uh, ore, but it actually takes a ton of clay to graft a single wall, so 30 clay bricks per wall. So you're going to need quite a bit of this clay to actually get a pretty sizable structure down. And we're also going to start getting the components that we need for the concrete building pieces. So that's going to be some screws here. Let's maybe craft like five of these. And then we're going to need a ton of steel rebars too, so I'm just going to craft up maybe... Um, let's start off with like 25. Alright, and that's going to be nowhere near enough for what we have planned, but for the time being, let's just leave it at that. Um, and... I think it's time that we start getting ourselves into glass making as well. We're going to need a ton of glass in addition to all of this. So let's grab some of this silica stockpile that we have and get all of this crafting up into glass as well because we're going to need an absolute ton of glass. And so our exotics finished crafting up and as you can see we got 80 out of that one node. That's an absolute load of exotics plus. Uh, the other 15 that were uh, just gathered up regularly. So one single node gave us, what, 96 exotics? So we are really going to start farming exotics thanks to that miasmic pickaxe. All right, and so for the first thing that we're going to craft in our electric masonry bench, as far as concrete pieces go, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, 20 concrete pillars. We're going to need those to support the structures that we're going to build. It's going to make the whole building process much more simple just in terms of support. Um, so I'm going to switch over to the clone character and get 20 of those pillars crafted up. Alright, so we got 20 of these beams crafted up. Nice and cheap, considering it costs 25% less on that other character. But with that taken care of, now I think we need to start looking into getting ourselves the glass going as well. So we're going to unlock the glasswork bench. Um, these three, I'm not going to spend uh, workshop points on them quite yet. I have them on my other character, but just so we have the bench, um, I'm going to pull this out and craft this up and get this down in our very crowded base. Um, oh, and it looks like our iron is completely full. Let's take that out. Um, our storage cabinet is also very full at this point. We are just swimming in resources at this point. It is crazy how much stuff we have. All this stone too. I'm just going to stick it in there. Uh, but the stone one is still operating. We're going to have another full inventory's worth of stone in there. This is all going to become iron. And this this miasmic pickaxe is insane. Uh, I would 100% recommend getting it, especially if you're planning on doing some big building projects like we are. It's going to come in handy. Alright, so I cleared out this area over here. This is where I think I'm going to put our barn for all of our animals, so uh, I'm going to get the pieces together for that, and we're going to get the barn down over here. We're going to have to move this bridge. Uh, I think we're going to take up pretty much this entire little island here for the barn, but I think it's going to look pretty cool once we get it down. Alright, so we're going to craft up the glass station here. And when you have a glass station, you always want to make sure you have it attached to your water network. If you craft a glass without it attached to your water network, uh, it will not be reinforced glass. Reinforced glass is much, much, much stronger than normal glass. It's almost a waste to craft glass building pieces without it being attached to a water network, so definitely make sure you have that set up before you look into making glass pieces. 
they're going to break so easily if you don't have them as the reinforced version, so 100% make sure you have that ready to go. Alright. Man, we are so cramped in here now, it's not even funny. <laughs> At least we can still get through. Um, but yeah, it's, this is all in service of crafting the new base up. I think this is a pretty common theme with my videos at this point, is we just expand and expand and use up all the space possible indoors. Uh, and as soon as it gets to a point where it's practically unbearable, that's when we expand. So <laughs> that's kind of where we are right now. We really need to get the new base up and running. So I'm glad to have this down. Let's get this hooked up to the water network and we will be ready to start crafting grass glass pieces as well. All right, all hooked up. So we have a ton of clay bricks now. Um, it looks like a lot more than it actually is. You know, you're not going to be able to make too many building pieces. It costs 40 bricks per wall, basically. So, you know, it looks like a lot more than it actually is, but we will be able to get probably the amount of tiles that we want for our barn. I want to make the roofs out of clay bricks on the barn. I think those look really nice. Um, so yeah, that's what those are for. Um, and as we wait for all this stuff to keep crafting up, I am going to make a few more stone floors. I think I want to make the area surrounding the pen, out, uh, surrounding the barn rather, out of stone. I think the way it looks is really nice. We're going to have it offset by interior wood as the outside wall. So the interior wood kind of lined up against the stone looks really nice in my opinion. So we're going to get that going. Alright, and just as all that stuff crafts, as we do our little harvesting around the base, we are just cranking out the levels. We are level 53. Feeling great. Now I also am going to get the seeds for rhubarb here. Uh, this is one that uh, cannot be found anywhere. You have to get it from the workshop. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this. Get one packet of it. Uh, we have tons of tea right now, so I'm going to replace our tea with rhubarb. And that way we're going to be able to get some more uh, vegetables going for ourselves here. All right, we got some rhubarb going. All right, so a little bit of time has passed. Uh, the first crop of rhubarb is already finished growing here, and we have a storm coming in just in time. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys all the resources that we've crafted with these material processors. So we just open it up here. Now we have a, a good amount of coal and silica just sitting in here still. Uh, take a look at this iron cupboard. So this is an expanded one with 10 extra slots and it is filled completely to the brim with iron ores. In this one we have a ton of silica, we have all this wood that we chopped, all those epoxies we made up, uh, a bunch of stone here. We got our furnaces running, a ton of silica we turned into glass here, we got a bunch of steel going, a ton of glass, we have some iron smelting up in here as well. Uh, up here, I've prepared some of the bars for the crafting that we're going to do. All of these clay bricks are ready to go. And then in this processor, we have a ton more stone. In our bench here, we have almost 300 concrete ready to go. Our 20 beams, 20 stone floors, a good amount of rebar, uh, some extra stone. And then just sort of as temporary storage, we have some more silica in here and a bunch more stone in here. So we are really, really looking good on resources right now. Oh, I didn't check this one either, so... Oh, I did check that one. Okay. <laughs> so we are looking really good on resources. I think I'm going to get our electric uh, carpentry bench up. So we're going to replace this old carpentry bench with a nice new electric one. And once we have that up and running, we're going to really start looking into crafting a bunch of interior wood on that one. And swap over to the clone character, get a ton of concrete pieces going some brick pieces going um, and also on that character I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, skill that improves the durability of wood building pieces because I definitely think we're going to want to have some interior wood as a trim for like exterior walls and in some of my building plans so when storms like this come that'll help uh, that wood resist damage at least a little bit help cut back on any repair times if it gets too annoying, maybe we'll end up replacing those interior wood pieces with concrete or something down the line, but uh, what I have in mind is I want to build a barn for all of my animals first. With the new Leica update coming, we're going to have a ton of new animals to take care of, some chickens, maybe some sheep, 
a bunch of new tames that we're going to want to take care of. So I want to have a really nice barn set up for all of the animals. And if you're building a barn, you know, it, I think it just has to be made out of wood. It doesn't look right if it's not. So at least for the, this time, for the time being, we're going to craft it out of wood and glass and just see how that ends up looking. Uh, but yeah, let's get swapped over to the clone character and get crafting once we've set up our electric carpentry bench. So 60 of that steel that we just crafted is going to have to be sacrificed in order to get this electric carpentry bench up and running. So we're probably going to need more steel. We have a little bit of bloom in here. Let's get that smelting up. Uh, but yeah, 60 of this is already down the drain. Uh, that's a lot of rebar that we're missing out on. So we're going to need some more, uh, more blooms for sure. All right. And just like that, we are ready to craft up our beautiful electric carpentry bench. Let's get this thing going. Excellent. All right, let's get this thing down. I think it is a little bit larger than the existing one. Yeah, it is a little bit longer, so we're going to probably have to push our machining bench out to the left even further, but that shouldn't really be a problem. For the time being, let's just get it down. All right, so I decided just to stick it on the side of this. You know, we're really getting cramped again, but, you know, the whole reason we're doing all this is so we can get a nice new base up and running. So we have it down for here right now. Let's get it wired up and then get to crafting. All right, awesome. And with that taken care of, the sun has set, our battery is starting to drain, so let's go ahead, take a nice sleep, and get to work in the morning. Good morning, everybody. The storm has settled. It is a brand new day here on Prometheus. Let's go ahead and get our rhubarb harvested here. Very nice. That's a nice big harvest of rhubarb. 52. We got some seeds as well. Let's go ahead and stick that in our deep freeze for now. And we're going to look into crafting some new foods with that pretty soon. Alright, we have a ton of copper nails crafting up. I'm not sure if we're really going to need this many. If we end up not needing that many, we can deconstruct them. But we're going to be wanting to craft a ton of interior wood pieces for our base. So we're going to get those up and running. Uh, we have a good amount of interior wood crafted in here, but since we have this nice new machine set up, let's go ahead and maybe get a little bit more, uh, remember where I put my wood, a little bit more of that going, maybe a full 100 stack. That'll be 500 more interior wood. It's going to take 8 minutes even on this brand new fancy electric carpentry bench, so that is very slow. Um, yeah, with that taken care of, I think we are pretty well set on our resources here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and swap over to the clone character and start getting some of these base building pieces crafted up. Alright, so we are back on the main character. All of the building pieces are crafted up, everything that we need. So I went ahead and grabbed a few of the pieces here that we're going to need to start out. Um, and over here, as you can see, I've already placed down one piece. This I think is going to be the corner piece of our building. Um, and one tip that I have for you guys, this building is going to involve some free placement, which basically means we're going to be placing things that do not snap to the grid. Um, and this is a tip I got from a video from Infinity Gaming, actually. Uh, he's somebody who's left a couple comments on the channel, too, so thank you for watching. Uh, go check out his channel if you want to see some great Icarus guides. Um, but yeah, so when you place down something, you want to make sure that you're pointed at one of the lines next to the cardinal directions. That way you can get your alignment pretty much perfect uh, when you're doing the free placement. So I went ahead and did this line left of north. So that's something we're going to have to remember when we do our free placements, just to make sure we're, we're perfectly aligned at all times. But yeah, with this corner piece down, you know, we're, we're going to be building a barn right over here for all of our animals. It's going to be a really nice new home for all of the new animals coming into Icarus and the Leica update, I'm really excited for that update. And, you know, our, our few MOAs over there and our blueback, you know, they're pretty cramped in that little thing. So we're going to build a nice, spacious barn. I think it'll look pretty cool uh, with the design I have in mind. Hopefully it turns out well. Uh, it's going to cost a ton of resources, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. So uh, with that being said, let's get to building this thing. Alright, so I adjusted the angle a little bit and I also raised it just a tiny bit off the ground here. So this is the basic platform for our barn. This is going to be the barn floor. 
and we're gonna push uh, we're gonna have a walkway kind of surrounding the entire thing on the back row here so I think it actually lined up pretty well um, as far as the length of it goes so pretty excited for how this is gonna look let's get going Alright, so here is the foundation. This whole center stone piece is where all the animals will be living. And we'll have our walls kind of surrounding the barn here. So yeah, I, I really like the way that the concrete kind of lays against the stone like this. I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm glad I ended up going with that. Uh, but yeah, let's get to work on getting all our walls and everything set up too. Alright, so here's the basic shape of our building here. Um, now, we're probably going to actually want to make an entrance right here, so maybe I take uh, these down once we've sort of gotten the roof in place. Uh, but the most complicated part of this build is definitely going to be the roof. Uh, so let's get to work on the free placement for that as well, and I'll show you guys how that works. Alright, so the benefit of using concrete floors like this when you're doing free placement is they have this really nice line right in the middle. So basically what our goal right now is, is we want to get a pillar set up right exactly in the middle of one of these uh, ground pieces. And we're going to raise that pillar up and use that as a way to support our, our uh, roof. And uh, so we're going to build those out of concrete for sure, uh, at least for the time being. And that will basically be supporting the entire roof once we get it down. And it's since it's going to be exactly one half of a tile offset, we're going to have a nice roof that's kind of overhanging the walls instead of uh, being exactly flush with them at a diagonal angle. So let's go ahead and get that free placed pillar going here. And then because we used the cardinal directions at the beginning, not only do we have this line in the middle as a guide, but we also have our compass to make sure that we're aligned with one of those cardinal directions perfectly. Now, I'm also going to place down a horizontal pillar here, so that way we can make sure that uh, we are pretty much exactly half the width of this pillar as well. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. We're going to have to eyeball it. Uh, but we want to be exactly halfway through this and then exactly one half of a tile high while being perfectly aligned in the center. Uh, and in order to make sure that you're not snapping, uh, you know, one of the things that you might know is if you press the end key, you'll stop snapping when you're facing away. So I press the end key and I stop snapping, but as soon as you go back into line with something that has a snap, it'll start snapping again. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually press the home key on your keyboard and that will give you the free placement. Alright, so this is ending up being a little bit more complicated than I thought. The foundation is actually not supporting the free placement beam, which is unfortunate. So what we're going to have to do is place a pillar down below and then make sure that's aligned and halfway sunken into this pillar here. Um, that The halfway sunken part might actually be a little bit easier, uh, but we're going to actually use this as our uh, starter pillar. Make sure that's lined up with the cardinal direction and then try and get this halfway in and then we'll be able to do a pillar on top of this. We just need to make sure that that pillar is about exactly halfway high. So we do it like this and we can kind of check our work. Uh, that actually looks a little bit too high. Um, what we can also do is get a half piece. Let me get a half piece and then we can use that kind of as a guide for a half height. All right, so we're going to want our pillar placed down there to be just very slightly higher than this half wall here. So let's give that another try. Uh, basically, it looks like if we do it pretty much flush with the ground, that will be about as good as we can get it. All right, let's see how this works for us. It's very slightly higher than the half, which I think is what I want. Um, basically, this distance is going to be the distance between the roof and this wall. So it's going to be a very slight gap between the roof and the wall. Alright, let's see how the roof looks. Let's get one half of it up and see how it appears. Alright, that looks like it's pretty well aligned. Um, we'll take a little bit of a look out from here, but basically that's what the side of the roof is going to look like. I really like the, the look of 
you know, the overhanging roof like that. It's definitely a lot more hassle to get a, you know, a half sort of free placed wall set up like that, but I think the effect is really cool and, you know, once we have our barn up and running, it's going to be a really nice sort of building to look at as we come home. And as you're doing these things, always make sure that your support beams are in the ground if you're not using foundations. So these pillars are going to be nice and strong for us. Um, and I think when everything is said and done, uh, just two concrete pillars kind of placed right here is going to be enough to support the entire roof. So we're going to get everything constructed up here and see if that's the case. Alright, we got the roof set up, looking very nice. Now we just gotta get our walls in. I'm really liking the look of this. Alright, so I removed out all the extra concrete pillars, and these two concrete pillars just in the center here, that's gonna be more than enough to support the entire roof, so that's awesome. Oh, I actually want to change the placement of this, so let me... Go ahead and do a quick little correction here. Alright, there we go. So these two concrete pillars are perfectly aligned and we're going to have a doorway actually right here. Um, so yeah, very nice. The entire roof just being supported by two little beams in there. Very inconspicuous. On the outside, you know, there is that little tiny speck of concrete sticking through, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Alright, and there is the basic shape of the barn. It is looking really cool. All that's left now is to do a little bit more detail work on it, and I think uh, we're looking good. Alright, so here is the shape of the barn. Those are the two entrance ways. I'm going to have to do, you know, a little bit of work on getting our ramps up into there looking nice. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking the way this is looking. You know, it's just a, a matter of finishing up, putting on the finishing touches, you know, enclosing the bottom of it so it doesn't look like it's floating. Um, adding some uh, glass beams across the top. I think that'll look really nice. So let's get to work on just those final little touches here. Good morning, everybody. It is a brand new morning here. Um, as you can see, we're starting to inlay these uh, glass pillars inside of these sort of gaps with the wood. It kind of looks nice, in my opinion. I like the way it sort of contrasts against the wood and makes it look like that reinforcement is going all the way through those wood pieces as well. It looks pretty nice on the facade over here as well. So I'm going to start inlaying those and then also uh, adding this sort of little feature at the very peak of it. Uh, I think that looks kind of cool too, so we're going to go ahead and do that on both sides. Now because this is made out of wood, I mean I love how it looks, but you know, every time a storm comes we're going to have to be repairing the roof pieces at the top here because those will be taking damage. Fortunately these pieces at the bottom side don't really take damage, uh, only the ones that are kind of facing the storm. Oh, you can see this one already has a little damage from a, a previous storm. So I think I'm going to get the hammer attachment, the uh, hold time decrease, yeah, advanced repair speed, so it'll be 12% faster. So we're going to be doing a lot of repairing with this structure. Maybe it gets so annoying I end up changing it from wood, but I just love how it looks. So let's go ahead and craft this up. Excellent, now we got this. Uh, with that attachment, I believe that puts us at 20%. Yeah, oh, 29% uh, uh, action hold time reduction, so very cool. Alright, we got a ton more concrete pieces crafted up here. Let's go ahead and start putting the finishing touches on this thing. Let's surround the base of it with these walls to kind of hide the weird floating nature. I'm going to start placing these down and getting this covered up. Let's see how this looks. Alright, and as I was laying down those concrete pieces, I decided to test out the look of these stone walls. And I actually think I like the look of the stone better. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do the surrounding foundation out of stone. I think that's going to look really cool. All right, and just like that, I think, with the foundation kind of set up all around it, I love the look of those stone walls offset by the, the concrete stairs there. We got our two entranceways. I am absolutely loving how the new barn is looking. I think that's pretty much everything I want to do here. Maybe what we end up doing is uh, adding a few sort of decorative plants around the outside. I think that could look really nice as well. Uh, but for the time being, I think we are ready to move our animals into their new home. So let's get that done. All right, we got all the food troughs and water troughs completely filled up. I think in the interest of making our lives a little bit easier in the long run, I'm gonna make one of those metal rain reservoirs uh, and put that in here. Hopefully with the Leica update, we get some new food and water troughs, uh, especially water troughs that we can have attached to our plumbing system and that they'll, they'll just sort of automatically fill themselves. Uh, but, but until that update comes and we see what, uh, what that has in store, let's make a rain reservoir and hook that up to our plumbing system and then we'll just use that to quickly fill those water troughs when we need. Let's just stick that thing right there in the corner for now uh, and let's hook that up to our water network so we'll just constantly have a nice supply of water right next to our water troughs. And then I am glad I did the uh, sunken floor here that way we can just fill this thing up and not have any piping showing on our floor. Absolutely awesome. Another benefit of having all the animals way over here in their new pen is <laughs> Daisy constantly roaring is not going to be interrupting me while I'm crafting in the crafting area. Uh, but yeah, man, I love the way this thing is looking. Absolutely love it. All right, and with the big barn project finally finished, I think we tear down the old pen here. absolutely awesome so we have really opened up this side of the island now and that has freed us up to use all of this space as we think about what we want to do in terms of crafting our base so we have a nice really cool home for the animals over there it's time we start thinking about what we want to do for our own main base over here so let's go ahead take a well-deserved rest and come up with a plan in the morning Good morning, everybody. It is a bright, beautiful day here on Prometheus. I'm just enjoying the view of our new barn over there. I think that thing is really cool. I'm super happy with it. Uh, but yeah, I think, as I was just saying, it's time to get serious about our own fortifications here. And I think to kick things off, what I want to do is build... A, another free placed structure here, a sort of semicircular octagonal shape. There is another building method from Infinity Gaming. Uh, he has some really great guides on Icarus and it includes a few strategies for building octagons. So I think I'm going to use his strategy um, for building octagons as well. He was the one who uh, you know, did that guide about using the cardinal directions for free placement and uh, the way that he implemented that in his video was building an octagon. So I think what we're going to do is set us, uh, set ourselves up for an octagon sort of right here on this side, kind of make use of the natural sort of round shape of this island here, and we'll have that sort of extend backwards and connect into our base over here. I think that is the plan for now, so let's get to work on that. All right. So I think this is kind of where we want to place our base pillar. This is a good sort of way for us. So basically what we're going to have is sort of a half octagon wrapping all the way around here. Um, I think that's going to look really cool and we'll probably want to make that whole half octagon side of this wall here made entirely out of glass and we'll have just a really cool sort of facade right here. So let's go ahead and go with this placement here. Now we actually have to go and do the difficult part, which is getting the octagonal shape placed into the ground. All right, so using the cardinal direction trick, we're gonna get the first wooden beam down here, and I'm gonna have this be about halfway up from the ground here. 
So make sure we're aligned and then get that placed. That's going to be the very first part of our octagon base. Then you want to build two angled walls and then try and get a perfect um, 45 degree angle free placement pillar sort of right here in the center. And it's easier to work if you upgrade this into an octagon or into a concrete pillar rather. So we'll get that. Shame this into vertical and see what we can do here. And you're going to have to mess with the page up and down and your goal is to get this as perfectly flush with the top of the concrete pillar as possible. Alright, and once you have both of your center beams upgraded to concrete, you're going to want to place uh, concrete pillars all the way across on the um, horizontal ones. So you can upgrade the ones that you currently have uh, to concrete. Alright, and then extend them one additional outwards um, in the direction that you want to build your half circle. Or your full octagon circle uh, if you want to go for the full version of it. Alright, and so we crafted up some concrete foundations and got those laid in underneath our pillars here. Uh, so this is going to be the very base of our octagon. Uh, I think I want to try and do a half sort of wall here. I don't know if I want to extend it. I think I want to try and attach a sort of rectangular base into the octagon and just have it kind of be this sort of round feature facing out in this direction. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Alright, so when it comes to laying down these corners, um, the interior wood really doesn't look that good because the line of the grain doesn't mesh well with the other floors. So I do think we're going to have to end up going with the concrete here. Alright, and I did a little experimentation with the walls here. I think I really like the look of this sort of half concrete on the bottom and then the full glass up above. So I think that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go with the half look all the way wrapped around to the sides. And then we'll do one additional layer of full glass up. And then we'll put our roof uh, two blocks high from here. I think that's going to look really cool. Alright, and that is how I think the wall is going to look. Looking very cool. Let's take a quick look at it from over here. See how it seems from a distance. Oh yeah. That's looking really cool. I'm loving that. So now it's just a matter of finishing up our floor and roof, and this sort of half little octagon structure is going to be ready. Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of experimentation on the roof here. I kind of like how uh, the angled pieces mesh into the um, sort of normal roofs like this. I'm not quite sure if I want to go with brick or if I want to try and do a concrete ceiling. I, I really don't like the look of the concrete ceiling. It's like this green sort of aluminum material. Um, so I think I'm going to go with the brick. And the thing I'm conflicted on right now is do I want to go with like the brick tiles or do I want to go with the brick ramp pattern? Um, look at it over from this side. I think I prefer the brick ramp pattern over the um, normal brick roof tiles because it kind of blends with the angled walls a little bit better. So I think that's what I'm going to go for um, on this side. Alright, it took some trial and error, but we got the roof finished on the octagon building over there. I think it is looking absolutely awesome. I love how those bricks kind of lay into each other like that. It's looking really cool. Very pleased with it. Now we're just going to have to figure out what to do with these sort of jutting concrete pillars. Um, I'm going to do some experimentation with the support, see if we can get away with not having these jutting concrete pillars, but I have a feeling we're going to need at least a few. Um, that buffalo kind of scared me right there. Uh, we're going to probably need at least a few to make sure everything stays supported, but uh, I think like at least in this front sort of piece of it, when we're looking at the base, I don't really want to have that big a uh, concrete pillar right in the center of our window there, so I'm going to figure that out, but for the time being, I'm feeling very good about the, uh, the little octagon offshoot on the front of the base. Alright, and just like that, our roof is totally complete. I think it looks pretty cool. Let's just take one more look at it uh, from the outside. Yeah, that is looking awesome. 
And then on the inside, it kind of has an interesting little design. So let's take a look in here. So yeah, I think that looks pretty cool on the interior as well. Definitely pleased with how this shaped up. Yeah, that is looking very awesome in the sunlight. So with this little sort of room over here taken care of, I think I'm going to use this as maybe the sleeping room and maybe some storage, but uh, connected from here, we'll do maybe a one long or maybe two long square tunnel connecting into the new main workshop compound that we're going to construct where this old stone building is. So now the real sort of troublesome part is going to start. We're going to have to start tearing down a lot of what we made here, uh, making sure all of our uh, crafting stations and loot is safe as we sort of try and figure out how we're going to connect this to another compound here. Um, and from there, kind of figure out you know, what we're going to do for the main workshop area. Let's get to work. All right, so I made up just this quick little shack. Um, I'm going to use this as a temporary place to store everything from the base as we erase this structure so we can start building in the new one. Um, I made up on the other character a ton of iron cupboards. So I'm going to get these down in our little shack over here. All right. So this is quite a bit of storage here. Uh, you know, once we're done moving everything, I think we should have enough. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep it like this. We're going to move the benches that we're going to need to continue crafting out of, like the electric masonry bench, um, maybe our fabricator, materials processor. We'll have those up and running, but everything else, uh, also our deep freeze. Um, but everything else, I think we're just going to put into storage. And once that's taken care of, we're going to work on deconstructing this base. It's done a lot for us. We've gotten so much done in this, but it's definitely time that we finally upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and get my furnace set up in the little shack as well. The moving is coming along very nicely, uh, but we're going to want to be uh, continuing to prepare the resources that we need. Namely, we're going to need a lot more steel at this point. So I'm going to get some more steel cooking up. I don't really care about how the wires look in the shack. I'm just going to let it stick through the floor like that. Uh, but you can see, we made quite a bit of progress moving all this stuff out of here. We are well on our way to uh, being where we need to be. All right, we have made great progress on the moving out. As you can see, every single crafting bench is now out of the building. All we have to take care of is our storages here. Uh, that'll take a little bit more time to figure out, but uh, one of the things that we definitely want to do is let's go ahead and send all these exotics back to the base. As I was looking through our storage, I realized we still had a ton of exotics we haven't shipped back yet, so let's get that taken care of really quick. All right, 123 exotics. Very, very nice. All right, and just like that, everything is moved out of the base. We are ready. Tear this thing down and start all over again. Let's get to work. And let's take one last moment here to appreciate the old base. It has done so much for us. We got so much taken care of thanks to this structure, but it's absolutely time for us to upgrade. We have been living out of a box for far too long. Thank you for your service and goodbye. Just like that, the old building is gone. Fortunately, we have this new little shelter that we built here. This will be nice as we wait out this storm. Um, but yeah, I think <clears throat> the plan for here is, since we have so many stone building pieces, I'm just going to build the shape, as much of the shape as we can out of just the stone building pieces we have here, and then we'll change that over into concrete and glass and everything. Um, once we've gotten the shape laid out, sort of as a blueprint with these stone pieces. But yeah, we're going to wait out the storm and then let's get to work. All 
All right, and the idea that I have in mind, so I'm, I think I'm just gonna go with kind of like a little uh, rectangular shape across, maybe extend it over the water a little bit. And then I wanna have a, a bridge connecting over to that island, and we'll do like a power station over there with all of our power items, our batteries, our water wheels over there. So I think that's gonna be the plan as far as the, uh, the extension goes. So it's gonna be a ton of building, a ton. We're, we probably have nowhere near enough uh, materials for all the concrete and everything that we're going to need, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. And so we are already out of the stone walls and floors. Um, I am going to do a flat roof on the workshop area, so we're going to be using floors for the roof. I think that will look, you know, pretty interesting. It's going to be sort of a modern style concrete uh, roof to contrast the interesting sort of brick we have in our home. Uh, but yeah, that's this is going to be the basic shape. I'm going to extend this all the way over to the edge of the island. And then I think the uh, bridge over to the power station is going to be a future project. For now, let's just focus on getting our workshop layout set up here. Uh, figure out how many materials we're going to need. Um, for the time being, I think I'm just going to try and close off a section of it here. And then we can start moving everything out of that shack back into where our main base is going to be. Okay, so the base is starting to take shape here. Uh, I've decided on where we're going to have our entranceway. Yeah, we're going to be replacing all these temporary stone pieces with things like glass and brick. Uh, but I think this is how I'm going to have it laid out. On this workshop side, it's going to be a full concrete wall topped by a full glass wall. So it'll be a little bit different in appearance from the bedroom area. Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to make the tunnel into the bedroom out of glass or concrete or maybe the half concrete, half glass. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit of ex experimentation there, but uh, for the time being, this is the size of the workshop space that I'm going to be going for. I think this will be far <laughs> more than maybe we need. I mean, if we want to make things even more spaced out, we can always expand it outward into the water even a little bit more. Um, but I think this will be way more than enough space for everything we're going to have going here. This is much larger than the floor plan we were working with before. It'll be a lot more illuminated with all of the glass going across that uh, second wall there. So uh, at this point, it's just a matter of uh, pulling together all of the building pieces that we're going to need. I'm also going to do the entire interior floor out of interior wood here. So just as a temporary measure, I have the glass bench and the uh, electric uh, carpentry bench set up in here. So we're going to be crafting a bunch of stuff on our crafting character pretty soon here, but uh, this is how it's shaping up. So I'm going to get a bunch of these building pieces crafted up, and uh, let's get to constructing. I also just got the <laughs> dysentery debuff. I don't have my water purifier up right now. I should just set that thing up, but <laughs> we're using rainwater for the time being. So, um, Yeah, and obviously we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do about our farm. I definitely want to build a greenhouse. Uh, I'm thinking maybe what we're going to do is extend the platform in front of the barn maybe a little bit more towards the waterfall and then have a greenhouse kind of right there offset by the waterfall. Uh, or maybe we just kind of build like a garden in the middle between our two buildings. I think that could be nice. Uh, just keep the farm outdoors. You don't necessarily need a greenhouse. Um, but yeah, those are things I think we're going to think about in the future. So I'm going to get all those building pieces set up. And once we have that done, we're ready to move everything back out of the shack into our main building. So let's uh, let's start getting those things crafting up. All right, we got all of our interior wood floors ready to go. We have all the glass walls to do the offset ready to go as well. So let's get that going here. Awesome. We have the rest of the concrete floors for the roof crafting up right now, but let's get our uh, glass walls set up here too. There we go. That is looking so, so clean. I'm loving it. And just like that, we are all finished with the workshop side of the base. It is so spacious. It is looking so nice and clean. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait out this storm. I do want to do something with this section. I definitely am not going to leave it, you know, as these temporary stone pieces. I'm still debating whether or not I want to do it as glass here, or if I want to maybe do it as those brick roofing tiles. I think either one of them could look pretty good. 
All right, I tried it with the brick roofing, and I just think the glass looks a lot cleaner, so I'm going to go with the glass on the connecting tunnel there. Um, I think that's going to look really nice. And, of course, you know, it, I've been talking about this since we first built the base, but we're going to fill in the uh, gap beneath these walls, so it's going to look like it's a solid foundation. I think I'm going to do that out of stone walls, actually. Um, I think that'll look pretty nice. So we have a ton of leftover stone walls. I think we'll do this side of the base, and maybe we'll actually wrap the stone walling all around the front side uh, to keep it sort of consistent looking, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up fixing this into glass, and then I think we will be ready to switch back to the other character um, and start moving things back into the main base because this place is awesome. Yeah, I think that's going to look really cool with the stone across the bottom like that. And we'll definitely want to wrap that around the front side. A little difficult to see with the lighting currently, but yeah, that's going to look really nice. We have yet another storm rolling in. I feel like it never stops raining current recently, but uh, yeah, we, I went ahead and wrapped the stone around the bottom of both sides. I think that's looking really nice. Um, when it's a little bit better weather outside, I will get a better view of it, but I think this is going to be really cool. Alright, and as we're waiting for this storm to settle down, I'm going to get to moving everything over from the storage shack back into the main base here. Uh, I'm going to start with some of the bigger things. I have this organic residue cleanser here in my hands. Um, I think I'm liking them in this corner right here, so maybe we'll have both of them kind of lined up in the corner over here. Uh, when we eventually make our sort of power station, I think I'm going to break out this wall, have a bridge connect over there, and we'll make like a little shack for a bunch of batteries, a bunch of electricity. Uh, speaking of electricity, got to unclog our water wheels. Um, but yeah, I think that's the plan. Let's go ahead and get everything over into the new base. Looking forward to it. All right, and just like that, we are pretty much finished moving all of the storage crates into the other building along with all of the crafting benches. Let's take a quick look at what we got going on in here. So I have pretty much everything lined up, you know, against the walls. Uh, get this ramp out of here. I use those to kind of place the chests up on those shelves, but I like having uh, storage units just right above specific crafting units. It always seems to be storming the second I, I start recording. Um, but yeah, so, you know, this sort of storage area is all about, you know, unprocessed ores, processed ores, all of that is going to be right above the smelting areas. All of my things related to making components like electronics and stuff uh, is going to be over here right next to the material processor as well. Um, you know, my textiles bench here, the alterations bench. Over here is where I craft things like buildables and uh, things like concrete and glass, so sort of like the, the building blocks section. And then I have my organic residue cleaners here, a couple storage units above that. Uh, I decided to put the kitchen kind of right next to where I would be sleeping. Uh, we're going to you know, have to completely decorate this place out, make it look like an actual home. I'm actually really liking the ceiling here. Uh, I'm still kind of conflicted. I don't know if I like these ramps here. I might change that to be uh, flat walls to keep it flush with the workshop. Just have the flat walls continue over here. Um, but yeah, everything is pretty much moved over except for the food. Uh, I wanted to save that for last, you know, once we get all the wiring set up so I can uh, minimize the amount of spoilage that's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I'm really liking the progress we made. It's looking great. Just a few more things to finish off. Alright, everything is looking pretty good in here. Uh, I went ahead and actually crafted just a little walkway. We're going to eventually be building our sort of power station over there. Uh, but I went ahead and made a little staircase up to the roof here. And I'm still kind of debating whether we want to make like a greenhouse or maybe we could just move our farm up onto the roof of our base here. Um, but I think the very first thing we're going to want to do up here is let's get our... A contact device up here. Once it's upgraded to the satellite version, it'll look really great up on the roof. So we're going to get that up here, and that's going to look really cool as well. Alright, get that down right there for now. Maybe we'll eventually move it on top uh, where we have the solar panels, but let's just take a look at this. 
Oh yeah, that's looking great. Loving it. Now, I kind of just have this temporary wire. I was making those concrete pieces, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and actually get to work on the wiring under the floor here. Um, and for the time being, we still have that wire running from the roof. I haven't even finished the roof here, but I want to get the deep freeze in here so we can see how it looks in terms of space. So, you know, we went ahead and did the whole floor with the gap here. We'll be able to do all of our wiring underneath the floorboards. I think that's going to be really awesome. So let's just get uh, the wire for our deep freeze set up here. Very nice. Excellent. First wiring job on the new base. Feeling great. Not feeling great about the floor tile being out of line though. <laughs> Let's make sure we get that correct here. Awesome. And since we've been upgrading everything in the base, I think it's time we finally upgrade our doors as well. We've been using the cheap little wooden doors. Let's get ourselves some good reinforced doors here. Just like that. We are officially home. That feels good. Now, after all of that hard work, I say it's time we take a nice well-deserved rest in our beautiful new round little bedroom. See you guys in the morning. And I think that will do it for today's episode. You know, we made a huge amount of progress. We have the new base up. We have a new barn for our animals. It took quite a bit of time to get all of the pieces put together, to get all the materials and actually build it. Um, I know I cut a lot of it out, so maybe it doesn't seem like it took that long, but it actually took quite some time and effort. There are a few other projects that I have in mind as far as buildings. We have the greenhouse plan, we have the sort of structure we're going to put all our batteries and uh, do all of our power related things in, but there's also another building uh, that I'm going to be building quite shortly here, and that will be a sort of monument or a monolith, a place for us to have a, a really nice view, a really nice sort of scenic place to build this, and I'm actually going to be placing the names of all the channel members up there. So that will be the memorial for all of the channel members. Uh, channel memberships are officially live right now, so if you want to support the channel, that would be extremely, extremely appreciated. You know, I, simply just watching the videos and subscribing and leaving comments, that's support enough, but if you want to go the extra mile, I would be very appreciative and we're going to be making a really cool place to house all of your names and I'll be sure to give you guys a shout out at the end of every episode as well. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to say thank you everybody for all the support. I wouldn't have been able to get to the place where memberships are even possible without all of your help. So thank you everybody who was watching, who's subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.